Well, you know, you finally made it big when you have the passive income MD in the flesh. So, uh, Dr. Peter Kim, I appreciate you uh, spending time with us today. Really excited to be here, Jeff. I'm here with the debt free doctor. Couldn't be more privileged. Feel honored to be here. Thanks so much. Now, we were talking about before we started recording, you and I met 2017, 2018, I think at uh, FinCon out in Orlando. And I had just started blogging after about maybe a year and went out there and met you and leave, you know, Physician on Fire and some other people. And y'all were just back then, y'all were killing it. Now you're just, you know, really, really, really killing it. So uh, really want to get into that, get into passive income, get into tax strategies, get into all kinds of stuff. But before we get going, tell people if they don't know who Passive Income MD is, who is Peter Kim? Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Peter Kim. I'm an anesthesiologist by training. Uh, pretty much by mistake, found myself into, you know, found my way into real estate investing, really because I wanted to create other streams of income so that I could practice medicine how I wanted to. There was a bad thing that happened at work where I felt like I was getting screwed by my boss to keep it short. And I realized that I couldn't rely on medicine alone. So I started learning, started figuring out what else can I do to create income streams. And I fell into real estate because so many other awesome doctors were doing it. And I felt like uh, it was possible for me too. So I started investing in real estate. I started sharing about it online through the form of a blog first, which then became podcasts, which then became courses and conferences. And that's what the brand Passive Income MD really grew into. It wasn't, again, an intentional thing, but just trying to share, educate things that you do as well, connect people to great resources. That's how all of this got built up. And this is how I ended up here today. All right. So you have somebody out there right now. They're a, they're a busy physician. They're a busy dentist. And they're always hearing about, oh, yeah, he, you know, just like what you just said, I got into real estate and blah, blah, blah. Easier said than done. So, so, so let's, let's kind of break that down a little bit. So you're, you're out there, you're putting people to sleep way back when you're here in the doctor lounge, you're hearing people talk about real estate uh, or that, were they talking about being like an active investor? I mean, most people talk about being an active investor. I mean, that okay. they were owning their own properties, but I started okay. to hear hints of like, oh, I don't have time for that. So I'm going to invest with someone else in someone else's deal. So I heard both about both active and passive. And how did you start off active or passive? I actually started out passive. I mean, I went to this, my friend invited me to a kind of like a real estate, like a one day conference put on by a, a brokerage called Marcus and Millichap. They were just talking about the state of the apartment house, you know, apartment uh, economy and market at that time. And when I went to that, I ran into somebody who created this one company as a crowdfunding company. And what he did was he said, hey, if you want to get into real estate, and you want to take action, but you want to do it for a small amount so you don't feel like you're uh, putting your family at risk, <laughs> risk, uh, you know, putting food on the fam, you know, food on the table for your family. Um, there's a way to get into real estate by putting in smaller amounts of smaller minimums and just to kind of learn. And I was like, you know what, that might be the perfect thing for me because I was scared. Like I didn't know much about it. I spent some time on forums like Bigger Pockets, mm -hmm. read a few books, but I really felt like I didn't feel confident in investing. And so uh, I, I he showed me his platform. Uh, which we call patch land at the time. And mm -hmm. it allowed people to invest in debt deals where you were able to act as like the bank. You're able to invest some money. Somebody goes out and does a fix and flip, gives you that money back interest every month. And at the end, when the deal is over, uh, they give you back your principal as well. And I was like, holy cow, I can do this. I can invest this money as the bank. And it's totally passive. And I only have to put down $5,000. Well, this might be a great way to learn. And so that's what I did. I invested my first $5,000 in a debt deal, what they call it, um, got at that time it was 13% interest per month. And wow. after a year, they pay me back uh, my, my principal in full. And so it was a very successful deal. And it's funny because I tell people that very first check that I got a month later, again, in real estate, it was for about $47. <laughs> I got like a $47 check. And I remember being so excited by it. I remember thinking like, this is the greatest thing ever. I mean, like call my wife and I was like, look, you, honey, you got to see, I made 47. And, you know, of course to her, she's like uh, $47. You could do a lot better than that. But I, I, it showed me that it was possible to create income, not by showing up into the hospital, right? Not putting someone to sleep, doing these kind of things, doing a procedure. I was like, there's a way to take my income create other sorts of passive income. And I saw the potential for that. And it made me think, how many of these do I have to do? 
Like how much money do I have to put in to actually, honestly, get rid of a call night, get rid of a weekend shift, uh, eventually get rid of all my night shifts. Like that was the goal. And so that, that kind of started off everything for me. So what, what is a call night? I don't, I don't know what that is in dentistry. Oh yeah, man, that's just, you guys are so lucky. I know you joking with me, right? <laughs> oh, you guys are joking with me. I mean, that's so funny. You guys have a good life too. Um, I mean, but you guys a lot of times works on Saturdays too. I know that maybe you take Wednesdays off, but you work Saturdays, but, uh, not, but not yeah, this just, guy. I know not this guy. Okay. Well, you got it good, but I mean, it just in terms of like really just shaping your career, how you want. That's what I really realized. If you want to work less, there's a way to replace your income with income streams outside of medicine, outside of dentistry, outside of your day job where you have to put in that time. And that's what got me really excited at the end of the day. And honestly, since then, I've been so obsessed with this whole idea. Well, so if somebody right now, and if they're a, let's say they're a dental student, a medical student, a resident, what, if you could go back, knowing what you know now, what would you go back? What would you tell them while they're doing all this training? You know, I know they're learning how to, you know, treat patients and fix teeth and do all this other stuff. But when they get out, they're going to have, you know, a good income, right? But they're going to pay a lot of taxes too. So what would you tell the student or residents right now that they, they could do in order to know kind of how to handle their money a little bit when they get out? What would your recommendations be? Right. Okay. I mean, that's a great question. I get that quite a bit. I don't know if there's one perfect answer, mm -hmm. but the first thing that I tell them is to think about how intentional they are with their time in their life. Like most people, when they think about becoming a doctor or dentist, yeah, they just know they want to be a doctor or dentist. That's it. Make good money. Like that's pretty much all they think about, right? They get into it. They may not find their way into the perfect practice. Next thing you know, they're caught up in the grind, lifestyle grind, you know, the, the, the treadmill that they might call it. You feel like you're part of this whole hamster wheel where you kind of inflate your lifestyle. Next thing you know, you're tied to your job. You have to work extra to even just to keep up. And I tell people from the beginning, it's nice to think how intentional can I and should I be about how I want my practice to look like, my family life to look like, my hobbies and interests, and kind of work backwards from there if that's possible. Meaning that most people think like, oh, okay, I'm just going to grind for the next 20, 30 years. And then eventually I'm going to be able to retire and, and enjoy life. Like for some people, like, is that really what you want? Like, is that what you want to do is give up the next 20, 30 years of your life, work your butt off, grind, perhaps even feel a little bit of the burnout, to try to get to some place, you know, 20, 30 years down the line that might not even be there for you when you get there. And so I told you from the very beginning, figure out what you want your life to look like, and then figure out how your career, figure out how your finances, tax strategies, and all that stuff might help you achieve those things first, okay? And shape everything according to what your ideal life looks like, if that's possible. And I want to let people know that is possible. That will affect the way, you know, where you live. It'll affect the type of job that you take. It'll affect even just the kind of uh, investments you make, the tax strategies you make. All of that will be actually dictated, um, will actually help shape um, kind of your whole financial future. But it all starts with figuring out what you want first. Do you do you think it's, it, it should be required that they get some type of training, some sort of, fun, you know, kind of like a pro athlete, you go from high school or college broke, you know, kind of like us to making good money yeah, we don't know how to handle it. So do you think there should be some sort of financial education or something, you know, stuck in those years? Or what do yeah. you think? I mean, it's so funny, because you, you are required to be like an entrepreneur or business person, in a lot of ways, especially your profession, you guys are required to be a businessman, woman person. And you probably get no training for it. And we all know that, you know, it's, it's great to be passionate about what we do. And we all love that aspect of patient care, helping people. And at the end of the day, I believe that's why we went into what we do, you know, what, what we do now, right? Because we want to help people. But unfortunately, the realities of life do exist where you've got to pay the bills, you've got to live a certain way, you got to support your family, taxes, strategies, and all that stuff about retirement and planning for the future, it all comes into it. The problem is no one teaches you that side. And what ends up happening is that a lot of decisions that we make, whether it's taking care of a patient, certain procedures we do, all these kind of things, kind of get dictated by our financial situation, our financial well-being. That really makes a huge, uh, you know, impacts our lives tremendously. In fact, sometimes more than anything else. And so without that side being taken care of, 
without that side being handled, be, being, you know, feel like you're safe and secure in that area, the rest of your life and your career just doesn't work out the way you want. So I absolutely, it's a very easy answer. I think the answer is yes, we should get some sort of financial education. I think people think that about just life in general, like not even just physicians or dentists, but people in general, like no one teaches you the basic skills uh, in, in school about taking care of your finances. Like we we learn all of these, this advanced calculus and, and math and all these matrices. I don't know if you remember all of those things, but nobody teaches you about credit card interest, you know, how to like, you know, how to get use de le debt and, and leverage to your um, to your advantage and all this stuff, like just basic financial type stuff. For some reason, some people think it's a, you know, an intentional thing where people aren't taught these things. But I, I think that a lot of that needs to be part of our, our standard education, especially as a doctor. When you teach doctors and you teach dentists, you teach physicians, and you teach them how to create other streams of income so they can really take hold of their financial uh, careers and ultimately their medical careers, then it completely changes the game for them. And that's what I found in my life. So we, we just talked about students and residents. So you got somebody right now that's practicing. Maybe they've been out for five to 10 years. I really didn't get into this till I've been out for about 10 or 11 years. So you got somebody, they're grinding it out every day. They're paying a buttload of taxes. They want to get started with with real estate. Where what would you? What are some of the steps you would tell that person to do? Well, again, I, I I'm always a stickler for this, but I, I think it starts. It's kind of like running a race. Well, if you don't know what exactly you're running for, like what direction you could be running in any direction, right, and not actually getting to where you want. So I think it really starts with you figuring out, um, you know, where you're at. Oh, figure out where you want to be first, right? What, what do you want your ideal life to look like? Figure out where you're at second, right? Because kind of like to know how to get from one location to another, like let's say use Google Maps or whatever, two things you need to put in, you need to put in where you want to be, your destination, but you need to know where you're starting out so you can figure out a basic roadmap for that. And so, of course, life isn't that easy, but if you can think about where you want to be in terms of how much money do you want to make for your investments, you know, per month. That's what I tell people. And I get, tell people to be very, very specific about that, which would absolutely change your life. Maybe it might be $5,000 a month, 10,000. People living in my area, it's probably 30,000, 40,000 a month was what they want to make in terms of additional income, in terms of passive income streams. So I say, fine, start there. Think about that 30,000, $40,000 per month. Okay. Think about where you're at today. Where are you starting? What do you, what does your life look like? How much do you have? Your resources, your connection. And then you can start to kind of draw a line between those two to figure out how to get there. What's the vehicle going to be to help you get there? Is it going to be starting another business? Is it going to be buying a business? Is it going to be real estate investing? How much time, energy, and effort capital do you have? And so if all of that kind of falls in line and people say, I want to invest in real estate, that's great, right? After all that, because then they know exactly what real estate is going to do to help them out. And as we know, one of the most, the, best benefits of investing in real estate is that are the tax benefits for us as high net worth, high income professionals. Unfortunately, we kind of get the short end of the straw a lot of times in terms of tax benefits. You hear of all these other uh, business folks that are just really uh, utilizing the system to the best of their abilities. And they're doing, you know, again, they're doing what the government incentivizes them to do. Uh, and they're paying these really low tax rates. Unfortunately, a lot of times like us, we feel like you know, this time comes around when we're recording this, this is when usually some sort of uh, payment is due. And usually this is painful around this time because we've got these big old checks. So how can we utilize what other people are doing to minimize the, that real estate, so minimize that tax burden so we keep more money in our pocket? And I think real estate is one of the greatest ways to do that. Number one, you have to really understand the difference between active and passive income, how the tax, you know, tax deductions, tax benefits are, are in each of those worlds and understand how to utilize both of those worlds, active and passive income, to try to minimize all the taxes that go out every single year. And so I think that just starts with education, and then it starts with obviously finding a right team. If you're CPA, and you go to them and you say, and you're interested in investing in real estate and to minimize taxes, and you go to them and you say, look, I, I want to use real, real estate to, to minimize my taxes, and they're like, well, I don't, I'm not really like, fully versed in that, or I'm not sure if that's possible through this or that, it's probably time to find another real uh, CPA, in my opinion. Because again, they're like specialists, just like we are. 
they're specialists and some people are good at some things. Sometimes you outgrow some. And so really finding that right, educating yourself and finding that right team is, is the right kind of first two steps. Yeah, it's funny. I, I'll do calls, um, you know, like, like I'm sure you do on a weekly basis with people that are, you know, interested in this. And, and I'll ask them just what you said. I'll say, well, what are you shooting for? What do you want? Well, you know, I, I'm looking for passive income. Okay. How much, you know, for what? Well, I hadn't really thought about it. So they're just wandering around, you know, just kind of, well, I kind of look at this website and this YouTube video and it's just like, it, it, it just, sometimes it kind of irks me because they just, they'll do that for a couple of years. And then you're just losing all of that time because you make more money. I mean, look at the government, they can print money whenever they want, but they can't, you know, make more time. Right. So and that's what I tell them, you know? And so if, if you got somebody like that, that, that they, that they figure out how much passive income they want, they want to do real estate, they want to mitigate taxes, what, where would you send that person then as far as ways to learn, whether it be a, a books, podcasts, conferences, what, what, what are some of your recommendations? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're lucky that we have all the information available at our fingertips today. And for someone who says, oh, I don't, I don't know where to start. I'm like, like, just look at your phone. You've got every, I mean, even with ChatGPT now, you can answer any question that you want about real estate. You can just ask it directly. You don't even need a person now, a mentor. You could ask ChatGPT and get most of the answers. Uh, but all the information that we absolutely need is at our fingertips. The question is, like, sometimes we're, I don't know, they say like we're drowning information, drowning in information, but starving for wisdom. And I think that really rings true today, where, again, we have all the resources available, but you don't sometimes know where to turn and start. And so what I would suggest for people, like one of the most the high yield and the best way to kind of accelerate your knowledge is to find somebody, like find a community and find a mentor. I, I think that's like what I tell people right off the bat. Find somebody who's where you want to be. They don't have to be 10 steps ahead of you, 15 steps. Sometimes they're just two steps ahead of you. But they'll already have learned some things that, you know, you want to learn. And maybe they tried some things that you thought about trying. And they might help you out, help you save some, you know, save from doing some mistakes. And so uh, that's probably one of the first places I always tell people to look. Find a mentor, find someone that you respect who has or is where you want to be. Find a way to add value to them. And trust me, they will find a way to add value to you. And that's what I found, number one. Number two, as I say, surround yourself by people who are trying to achieve or accomplish the same things you're trying to accomplish. It might have the same type of mindset. For me, when I found myself in the doctor's lounge quite a bit, most of the people there were unfortunately not so happy <laughs> uh, about life, but they weren't doing much about it. And so if you're in that community all the time, you, it rubs off on you. You feel like, look, life is, life is tough. Life is challenging. There's really not much I can do. Uh, you're part of the grind. But if you're around people like you, Jeff, you're part around like this community that I'm part of, like who are like, you know, they're they're doing things in their career, they're making moves in investments, trying new things, having fun at it, being good, for, you know, and living a good family life, traveling, doing all these things, that's going to make you also kind of like want to do those things too. And so that's been one of the best things for me too, is finding a really good community of people, at least I'd say four to five people if you can, who are like-minded, sometimes they're in the communities like yours, find them online, whatever it is, surround yourself by those type of people and you're going to learn more than anything. So that's why I'm also a big fan of going to in-person conferences. I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, you know, J Jeff, you said you're going to a conference pretty soon. I mean, a lot of that information you can get online, but there's something about meeting together. Mm -hmm. There's the energy when meeting other people, like just like we're talking, I can learn more from you sometimes in a single conversation in a 10, 15 minute conversation than I could have gone out there trying to read books for the next three weeks, right? Or a month. And so that's what I find when I go to these conferences, so much value is in meeting and hearing stories from people, being able to ask questions. So I really recommend people to get out there, find that community, hit up conferences, and, and just, just try to find other people like who are like-minded. Yeah, one of the first conferences I went to was in Dallas, and I, I didn't know anything about syndications, and I thought I was going to go there to learn about real estate, like buying a duplex or a fourplex or you know airbnb or something but it's all about syndications and what's cool was not only was i there as you said networking with with these passive investors but then there was also the the syndicators there you know the sponsors so you know you could hear from the the investors oh yeah you know i invest with that group or that group stay away from that one you know and then 
So you kind of know who to talk to or whatever. And I actually had breakfast one morning with, uh, with a group, uh, Dan Hanford with uh, passiveinvesting.com. Uh, luckily I did that because I wound up getting in a deal with him. First time he kind of walked me through how to do a self-directed IRA. I didn't know anything about that at that time. But again, like you said, that would have never happened had I not gone to that conference. I, I think I think you you hit the nail on the head about that. Doing getting around these like minded people is so much different. Um, you've you've mentioned a little bit about taxes, and I, I don't think people when they get out realize how much they spend, uh, how much they have to pay the government, and you know it, it's even more even you know nauseates me even more when I see what they're doing with my money. And doing with with your money, <laughs> yeah. what you know, whether you align with them or not. So, with that being said, what are some things that we can do to? And you you kind of mentioned it a little bit about investing in real estate. How can that affect our taxes? Yeah, I live in California, so trust me, I feel the pain. I mean, you feel the pain probably more than a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. So, not only the the federal and that sort of thing. And so, when it comes to real estate, again, one of the I say the you know the one of the major benefits they always put in there are tax benefits and and why is that there are so many different ways to utilize real estate to your advantage when it comes to taxes I don't know if the, like we should do a whole master class here today but I could talk about some of the few key ones that that I I've definitely heard of or I definitely use I think when we can talk about active and passive real estate let's talk about passive right now syndications because we like talking about that. You invest in a lot of those. I invest majority of my funds in passive real estate, meaning that syndications and funds. I do both active. I have some of my own properties, mm -hmm. but in terms of leveraging my time best, I like to invest in, in deals. And so what happens is that with deals, like what often happens typically, what a typical deal looks like when I invest in a syndication, let's say an apartment building. And when I invest, you know, my hard earned money in there, what I expect is that this deal will probably last somewhere between, let's say, three to seven years, five to seven years to be safe. What I expect is cash flow at some point throughout the, the, the term deal. Um, and then at the end, when the deal is completed, then what happens? I get a big lump sum, sum in terms of profit. I'm able to either spend that, utilize it, you know, pay taxes on it, or, or turn it to another uh, deal. So what ends up happening in um, a lot of these deals, what's really cool is that you know, everything that everything has a lifespan, meaning that the government allows you to say that the building or the apartment building, everything in the building and beyond, all of that stuff has a lifespan. As the government allows you to deduct that, like you would deduct like a car or something in your office. You know, it, probably people who own their own practices understand this part, right? Um, and, and deduct and depreciate a lot of the stuff in there. And so what ends up happening in these passive real estate deals, you're able, because you are an owner, small percentage owner, you're able to take part in that depreciation as well. So what ends up happening is on paper, uh, what ends up happening is that when you invest in a deal, you show a loss on paper for quite a while because the government says that the building, uh, everything in it is depreciated. You start with a negative value there and you're able to start with a loss on paper. But over the life of the deal, I receive cash flow. Now that cash flow is protected in a way from taxes because I'm starting out with a loss on paper. So it's offsetting some of that loss on paper, but I'm still not uh, having a gain uh, or what you might call it. So I get tax protected, tax free cash flow throughout the deal. Now, when a deal ends, what ends up happening is yes, there's capital gains on that, and there's a, an exit on that. Now, this is something you should consult with your CPA about because I'm not a tax professional. What ends up happening, what I end up doing is doing something called a, a syndication ladder. So when a deal ends, I typically go into another deal with that money. And what I do is I roll that money into another deal. What ends up happening is that new deal also creates a massive loss because of depreciation. That offsets a lot of the gains from that previous deal that I just exited. And so basically, it's like kicking the tax can down the road. Some people call it the lazy man's 1031 exchange that you may or may not heard about. I'll talk a little bit about that if you want me to. But it allows you to kind of kick the tax can down the road but allows you to get tax, uh, tax protected cash flow throughout. So that's amazing for someone like me who doesn't really practice that much in medicine anymore. I rely on that or I want that cash flow for my own lifestyle, but I don't want to pay a lot in taxes. So what ends up happening is because I invest in a lot of these deals, I get tax protected, tax free cash flow, and I just keep kicking the can down the road. So let me let me ask you this. Um, that apartment it sells. Mm -hmm. Let's say you let's say your initial investment was 100 grand. Okay. You get your distribution. Let's say it's five years. 
it sells, you get your initial investment back, your hundred grand, you get in all your distributions during the five years, then you get your profit. So if that group doesn't have anything for you to 1031 exchange into, and you get, and you get the, you know, your initial investment back plus the profit. So what you're saying is you can take that and then you can turn around and do it like in a different group and mm -hmm. then use that depreciation. It isn't, it does not have to be, you don't have to 1031. Is that, is that your ladder that you're talking about? Yeah, you don't have to 1031. It's kind of lazy, man. Again, talk to your CPA about this to, to confirm this. I'm not a tax professional. But what ends up happening is a passive loss is a passive loss and a passive gain is a passive gain. So uh, the government really makes the distinction between active and passive losses and gains. There's a, there's a separation. You know, All of us in our day jobs, that's all active work. That's our active work. Uh, when it comes to real estate investing, that's in this passive world. And so losses and gains only can offset each other in your own active and passive world. So what ends up happening is that when you get those passive gains, when you come out of syndication, when you come out of that, that can be offset by losses that you create by going into another deal. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is that I try to, as best possible, I try to match up what I, you know, those the, the new deal with the gains from the old deal which allow me to kind of just absorb that gain into the next deal's loss. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. And so you're able to kind of kick the can down the road and they don't have to be the exact same deal. They just have to be in the ca same calendar year. And so I try to be really conscious and try to be relatively uh, intentional in doing so. Now there's a little bit of leakage. Sometimes it's not perfect, but it allows me to really offset a lot of the taxes that I would get otherwise. And it's, it's powerful because it's like, it's like um, being in a real, you know, retirement account. People know their 401k is really powerful because it allows for compounded growth, right? Without having to pay taxes, you get to, you know, get compounded growth. And this is a way in real estate to get compounded growth. Because let's say you invested in that initial hundred thousand dollars, like you talked about, and let's say you walked away with a another hundred thousand dollars profit, just to be just like really, really round numbers, right? So now you have two hundred thousand dollars, for example, right? You're hundred thousand initial, and you end up with a hundred thousand dollars. Um, you know, profit example. So now you have $200,000. So normally you'd have to pay taxes on that extra $100,000 gain. But what if you're able to take all of that $200,000, go into another deal, and then now your basis or your basis for your next deal, now you've brought $200,000 into that next deal, which will continue to compound, which will also be able to spit off more cash because cash is just a percentage of how much money you put in. And now you've got bigger cash flow, bigger profits, and that without a tax taxable event. And what if you're able to do that and repeat that two, three, four times? And so that's what I hear about a story of like, I could just tell you about, actually I actually have a friend named Jeff. Um, he had an awesome story where again, he, he had a friend who, who um, sorry, my, my friend Jeff's uncle, he invested back in, it's like 1994. He told me, he actually showed me his numbers. He invested $60,000 in a deal. And he just carried and followed this one deal. $60,000 to now, which is about, I'd say about what, 30 years now. Is that 10, yeah, almost 30 years. That's right. That's a good amount of time. But in that 30 years, his $60,000 investment now is worth somewhere about $2.4 million, right? Because that's the amount that he's carried from deal to deal to deal to deal. And what well, the best part about it, he's also in that period of time, he's received $1.6 million in distributions, all tax-free. And so you see the power of compounding on this and tax-free growth. And what ends up happening is when he dies, like his uncle dies, that'll get passed along to his family, right? At a stepped up basis, which means essentially tax-free. And so that's the power of real estate, compounding, generational wealth, all of that can happen. You had, I think, some really, really, uh, really, really famous uh, um, uh, CPAs on your, on your, on your uh, podcast before. People who know a lot more than I do. But again, finding the right people to help you out with this, knowing the basic and understanding to know how to ask for it, know what to look for is, it's just the, it's just the start. And it's funny you say that because I was thinking about it. Cause now my kids are one of them's graduating high school next month. Uh, and <clears throat> they have all this money in a 529 plan. And then my sophomore, um, same thing. Well, my, you know, my sophomore, I was telling you about, he's, he's really like the, the numbers guy and stuff. And mm -hmm. he found out how much he had in there. And he's like, well, you know, I'm, I've got all A's, so I'm probably not going to need that money. C can we buy a house in Airbnb? This is a sophomore in high school. Wow. So I'm, I'm loving that they're that we we talk about this and stuff. Because I mean, I never I never heard about this stuff before growing up, but 
if I could go back, I would have never done a 529 plan. So I would have done what you just said. I would have, when they were born, I said, here's a syndication, <laughs> 50 grand, and we're just going to carry it forward. Think about what that would have been in 18 years when they're going to college. And if they don't use it, it just keeps, like you said, it keeps compounding. You know, th- so my wife and I made it a point whenever we have, if if we have, and hopefully we have grandkids, we're going to do that for them. You know, each one, they'll get a, a syndication, uh, earmark it for their education for the, you know, the, or they can do whatever they want with it. And then that way you're not constrained with, oh, it's got to be for education or this and that they could do, you know, and it's a great way to, to well, remember the politically, remember they tried to actually something with the 529. I'm trying to remember where they started to change about the way, whether it would be taxed or not. Remember there was a, I mean, like the unfortunate regulations could change at any time too. So that's like a, that's a scary thing. And you're investing in that and expecting that to be there. Maybe it's, it's there now, but maybe, you know, in 5, 10, 15, or whatever it might be, or, you know, might not be there for them. Yeah. So, uh, but it, but anyway, it's also a great way just to kind of have conversations with your kids and grandkids about real estate, entrepreneurship, money, because, you know, as you know, in high school and a lot, a lot of time in college, they don't get any of that. And who else is going to teach them? TikTok or, you know, YouTube or you, you know, you know, so that that's what I really like about it, you know, being able to learn and then pass it along. And, you know, it's funny, and I'm sure you get this too. People, I'll have a call or something and people will do, will say, why do you do this? You know, why are you telling people how to do this? What's in it for you? I'm like, well, it's just fun seeing people change lives. I mean, you with, with passive income ND and all the conferences you have, I mean, why, why would I want to sit in my office and keep this to myself? You know, I mean, it's, it's powerful how you can change people's lives. To me, you know, I, that brings me more joy going out and, you know, I make it a point when we go to the grocery store, when I see a little kid, you know, I always ask the mom, can I buy him some candy? I just, I just like, just like making people smile and, you know, trying to help people. And I'd much rather have that than, you know, like the Ferrari collection that you have. I don't need any of that. I just want to go help. Not people. me have, right? You're not talking about me. Having, no, I don't Ferrari collection. But it's in general, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so you've got passive income MD. So tell us about your, I know you've, you've got some conferences that you have, you have like a, a real estate Academy. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, again, the, the starting the blog was purely just to educate people, mm-hmm. you know, point of connect, just sharing what I was learning. And then along, along the way, I've been asking people, what else do you need? What else do you need? What else could help? So someone said, well, I like to listen to podcasts in my car. Can you do some? So I created a podcast. Then someone said, hey, I actually want to learn how to do the proper due diligence on a lot of these real estate deals. So could you teach us or a course? I was like, okay, I never thought about it, but yeah, let's create a course. And now we've created a course and had several thousand people participate in this. It's been awesome, right? Over the last couple of years. So we have a course called Passive Real Estate Academy, where we teach people how to confidently invest in syndications in Mm -hmm. four weeks. And that was our goal. In four weeks, get people the, the knowledge they need to a- ask the right questions and how to avoid the big mistakes. So that's Passive Real Estate Academy. Then out of that, I was like, okay, what else do you guys need? And people said, look, we want to get together with people more, find out more, like, like what I talked about, where you get that energy and that connection with getting together with other people, find mentors, find community. And so we're like, all right, let's throw a conference. I'd never thrown a conference before, but we threw a conference, a live one. You know, so We did one day and several hundred people showed up for one day in LA. And then the pandemic hit, of course. Then we did it virtually. So we turned it virtual and we had somewhere between six and 8,000 people participated in it. And then we went back live and virtual, kind of like a combo version last fall. And again, that was in LA. And so that's been one of the most fun things we've done because we get to meet people that, you know, that are part of the community. And again, the energy, the connections, the network, the friendships. I've seen people start businesses together. I've seen people invest together. I have people, um, uh, you know, create uh, accountability groups from that. Uh, it's just so many really cool things that have popped up from just getting people together. And that's probably one of the favorite, my favorite parts about this whole brand building, passive income MD. The education part is great, but just connecting people, creating this community is what really has driven a lot of the stuff that I've been interested in. And so we have something called PIMD Con, a passive income MD Con. And usually uh, we do it in the fall and we're going to do it again this fall, September 21st through 23rd. It's going to be about all about real estate investing and entrepreneurship. 
for doctors and high net worth individuals. And so we try to make it a really, really unique experience for people, create a really cool community. If anything, people walk out of it with a couple of great resources and a couple of good friends and connections. And uh, it's well worth it for them. And so that we just created things out of a need for whatever the community needs. Awesome. Well, um, I appreciate your time today. And we'll make sure that we put all those links below this video. So uh, the people watching this um, now and people watching this later can find it easy. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate what you're doing. You're doing amazing work. And thanks for helping our community. Absolutely.